really first thing to do is define session hijacking. And session hijacking takes two significant forms. First of all, it's finding and taking over an existing network session. So two or more clients talking to each other, finding that as an attacker, and then getting involved in that, taking that over in some way. Or finding a session that maybe isn't active. Maybe it's a saved session. Maybe it's a timed out session. Maybe it's a session that has some remnants that we could possibly use. And then using that information, those compromises, to re-enable or, or re-establish that session in a different context, in the context of the session that was previously going on. So kind of stumbling across something and potentially reinvigorating that in our con or in that context, but with us controlling it instead of whoever might have been controlling it in the past. This is really interesting. Imagine, for example, if you closed a web browser and walked away and someone was able to walk up to your web browser, connect back up to your uh, session that you had with the bank and not have to type in a username, not have to type in a password, just become you. Well, then take that to the next step. And what if that person shouldn't be on your computer in the first place, but can still do that kind of thing? Gets much, much worse. A great way to think about this is within the context of a session hijacking at our scenario company, Big Money Bank. And we've got two folks here, Alice and Bob. Alice being the employee or legitimate user of Big Money Bank. And Bob is a hacker, an ethical hacker who wants access to Alice's account. And in this context, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, going apart from the tools for a moment, essentially what happens is Alice connects up to this web client using her browser, uh, connects up and, and authenticates, provides login name, password, whatever she's gonna provide, uh, possibly smart card credential, possibly a secure ID or a one-time pad token, something like that. She goes through all this rigmarole and actually hooks up with account.bmb.com, convinces it that she is Alice, which is fine. But then if Bob can swoop in and become Alice, either for just a moment or for an extended period, Bob can do whatever he wants without having to re-authenticate. Bob becomes Alice long enough to do some naughty things. That's the key of session hijacking. That's the goal of session hijacking. And doing that is not simple. It's not as straightforward as just throwing a switch or just asking someone for a password, but it certainly has a profound impact, especially if you can make this attack last any length of time. If Bob can become Alice indefinitely or for an entire day, he's obviously got a heck of a compromise on his hands compared to if he can become Alice for one minute or two minutes. Certainly just becoming Alice for two minutes is a significant gain and is part of an ethical hack to prove that this thing is possible, but the longer it lasts and the more profound it is, the better for Bob.